everyone, Pot SM. Welcome to part three of our Ryefield 135th Challenger 2 TES video build. Before we get going today, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you click the little bell notifications, get notified of all our latest videos. Click the like button and leave a comment. I do read and reply to all the comments and appreciate everybody that takes the time to leave a comment on the channel. And of course, if you scroll up in the description, there's a link to a big long list of all the items I use in my videos. So if you see anything, you should be able to find it in there. So we're back with part three. We're going to weather up the Challenger today. Before we get going though, there's a little segments I've put in, you've just watched it, on every video. And at the end of it, it says, if you're looking for products in the videos, there's a list in the description of the videos. Now, I'm not sure it's quite happening, but nearly every video I get asked, where'd you get that from? Where'd you get that from? It's in the description of the videos. Every time it's there. It's a big, long list of about 100 products. It took me hours to compile and find links for. So, if somebody asks me, where would you get this from? It's like, mm, have you not watched the video? Are you not listening properly? I don't know. If you can't find it, fine. Ask me, not a problem at all. It's out of stock. We found a cheaper place or even an alternative product. Please let me know. But if you're going to look for a product, it's probably in that list. So rather than asking me, have a look. So there we go. So it's been bothering me for a while, but hopefully people will start listening now and look in that description because it is down there too. Um, so yeah, we're going to weather up the challenger today. Uh, we're going to run through all the products we're going to use first. Um, we're also going to use a life colour set as well, which doesn't go very good. Second time I've used it, second time I'm not very happy with it. The dust effects looked way too OTT. Um, I had to quickly backtrack and try and get it off. And it's added to that over weather look. I didn't want this thing to look quite as dusty as it does at the end. But I kind of pulled it back to an adequate level where I'm quite happy with it and it looks okay but you can make your mind up at the end of the video so we're going to run through all the products first that was filmed later on um because i started to weather the, the armor and then thought you know what maybe i should go for what i'm going to use so it's like a jump back and forth but you won't really notice in the video as such but that's how it was filmed um so we're going to do an oil wash uh oil fading dot filter uh we're going to use that light color set which you'll see and then see me take it back off uh, we're then going to use a couple of UMP washes because this thing is just dusty uh, at Bobbington, which is why I'm basing this weathering on. Um, it's not really covered in mud as such, it's covered in dust and splatter. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, so I'm not going to make any mud. Maybe in a later video I will, but I'll run through everything I've got there and the way I'd use it anyway. Um, and then you can apply mud to something if you'd like. So we had about six and a half hours of footage here that I've managed to edit down to about 50 minute video I think it is so sit back get a cup of tea put your feet up and uh, let's get cracking right then we've got a whole range and different types of weathering products here uh, we've got oils we've got UMP washes we've got pigments we've got enamel washes we've got flock uh, we've got different mediums for applying the different solutions we've got brushes we've got some um, pencils and graphite sticks as well but we'll start the UMP washes so these are one of my favorites for obvious reasons number one uh, we sell them but they are very very versatile and a whole range of colors highly pigmented um, the pigment level does vary from color to color and depending on um, the required effects so things like rust we don't really want that dusty look um, there's less content too but things like light earth uh, light dirt earth sand etc um, you will get a nice dusty effect off those. So we've got a range of nine colors. We've got rust, light dirt, concrete, dark dirt. Uh, we also do this very nice holder for them too. We've got winter, earth, we've got sand, concrete, sorry, algae, my bad, and mud as well. So various colors. What you use them for isn't necessarily dictated by the name, uh, but they are very useful as you'll see. So pigments, these are very soon to be released. Uh, we've got a whole range of colors, ultra high quality pigments, ultra fine, very, very nice. And you can do a lot of different things with these. So you've got the pigments themselves, various colors, which we'll run through when they get released. Um, I can apply them with UMP airbrush cleaner, thinner, sorry. Um, or we can mix them with PVA glue, some flock, um, some static grass, etc. and make mud. So another versatile product. Uh, when these are released, we'll run through using them a bit more in a video. Um, but adding them to PVA with a mix of pigment and static grass makes a fantastic mud effect. So we're not going to use those today, sadly, because we've not really got any mud on the Challenger. 
Um, we've also got enamel washers as well from Tamiya. These are some of my favourites for the car models. Very, very useful, very versatile. I've only got the grey and the black. They do me for most things. I thinned them down a little bit with the Sansador from Winsor Newton, which is a nodeless mineral spirit. Uh, give them a thin down from what they are out of the bottle. Uh, they're a little bit decanted there as well, you can see. And it makes a nice thin wash, nice and easy to clean up, and it's perfect for the car model. So again, we're not going to really use it on this, because what we're going to use more of is things like these graphite sticks, uh, or pencils, or oils. Now these can be picked up from Amazon, they're fairly cheap, uh, and great for adding some wear and tear to tracks, edges of the armour. And then we've got a standard pencil as well. So the pencil is a 3B. Uh, I've had this for probably 10 years now. And the graphite stick is a 4B. So a couple of different options. One can get in tighter areas. We've got a couple of brushes. So some of my favourite weathering brushes are the Tamiya HF range of brushes. So you get three in a pack. This is two of them. So it's a wide flat brush and a nice thin um, pointed brush. As you can see, model and brush HF. You get three in the set. We sell them at UMP. And they are dedicated for this. So oils, along with the UMP washers, these are some of my favorite weathering mediums. They are so versatile. Um, you can do a lot with them from washes, streaking effects, oiled off fade, um, filters, you name it, you can do it. Now I've got a whole range of colors, but for the most part, you'll get away with um, these colors up at the top. So green, brown, blue, white, yellow, and black. I'm gonna switch out um, the black, for today because we're probably going to use these colors um but they're the main colors we'll be using on the green and it will vary by the color of the vehicle we're going to thin these using sansador and uh, to either thin them for a wash or to take the product back off and this is a wash i made years ago of oil paints uh, probably a good five years ago and it's still to this day no problem at all it's been added to over time um, but one thing to remember, if you do make your own oil washers, you need to give them a really good stir and mix up before you crack on, because it does settle over time. But a very, very versatile product or oil paints. They're not that expensive. Each one of these tubes is about £3.50. It will last you near enough forever. And depending on the brand you go, I'd recommend a high quality brand like Abdul Lung or uh, Wendy Newton. And steer clear of the acrylics as well. The Santador, the Oldless Mineral Spirits, isn't cheap. Uh, but very, very good and doesn't stink to high heaven. So we have our, uh, is it raw rumber? I think it's raw rumber we've got here. And some Santador uh, decanted in a little bottle. Now we're going to make our own wash. We've got a UMP paint cup. I'm just going to grab a bit. Now there's a general rule of thumb with this. I think it's a pea-sized um, blob of oil to a bottle full, like a Tamiya bottle full of um, mineral spirits. Now I'm going to show you just how thin you can do this that's a tiny bit that's probably like i don't know a quarter of a pea half a pea maybe um i think it needs a little bit more to get it pigmented so this is about half uh we give it a mix up and i think it's a little bit thin and i'd say in the end we probably do about three times this amount of oil in this little pot but it's trial and error try it just make sure you give it a good stir up you'll never get it all mixed in it's just one of those things but get as much in there as you can mixed up Give it a real good stir, then grab your brush and give it a little test. You'll know um, how thick it is each time you do it. And add or remove more as you wish on your stick. And then give it a really good mix in there to mix it up. You want enough on there to really have it pigmented where you put it. So you want it to fill properly and look nice and deep and add the depth required. So it is burnt on, but it's not raw rumber. Um without having too much oil in there that you end up with a big sludgy mess. So you want the capillary action of the thinner wash to be able to carry it around, but also pigment and enough to actually give the effect required. So we're just going to give it a good mix up. Just take a while. Like I say, if you are coming back to using it, if you put it in a bottle, let it settle, then you really need to give it a good mix up again the next time you use it. If it's in a bottle, put some agitator balls in it and just give it a really good mix up as you go. So there we go. We're giving that a real good mix. We'll grab our paintbrush. This is our thin Tamiya HF pointed brush. I'm just testing the wash on the side of the pot. It looks good to me. I'm just going to test it on the side. You can see we've already done a couple of bits. Now, even though we're on a matte finish, if you touch it, the complete reaction will get oil wash around. So you can see we're doing all the raised and recessed detail. It's going to take you a while to do it. It'll vary on the type of armor that you're working on. 
and also the size of the kit as well. This is a big one, so I knew this was going to take some time. What you want to do is as little washing as possible because it means you've got less wash to remove later whilst putting enough in there to give the desired effect. As you can see, we just touch, like a pure reaction, carry it around, moving our way around the entire vehicle. Take your time. I always find this quite relaxing, to be honest. We get some music on or I get in a hangout with the guys and have a bit of a chat while I'm doing it. Just all around the vehicle. Everywhere raised has a wash in it. So as you see, it will go on heavier in some places. It will also pool in other areas. But don't worry, we can get this off later on. It's not a problem at all. And to be honest, being left behind by the oil kind of adds to the overall weathering most times. Uh, on pieces like this at the front, it's not raised enough to carry the wash. I run the brush over and then we carefully remove it later with a cotton bud. Again, this might not be the way everybody does it. It's the way I do it though. Always have. Because we'll come back once it's dry with a cotton bud soaked in our Santador and remove any of the excess wash we don't require. Periodically give your pot of wash a good stare as well, just because it will settle over time. And this can take quite a while to do, so periodically give it a little bit of a stare just to mix it all back up. So there we go. It's all been pin washed. It's all dried. Left it for a few hours to dry. You can also add a product called Liquin that wins and Newton make to your oils. And it makes them dry a bit quicker. Um, I've sadly gotten on. Keep meaning to pick it up and keep totally forgetting. Um, but you leave it overnight. You'll come back the next day and it'll be adequately dry. So a bit of Sansador and a little dropper bottle there. We've added a small amount of the end of this cotton bud. We use the wet end to wet where the wash is and then flip it around and use the dry end. And what we're trying to do is get rid of any excess um, overspill of the oil without removing it from all the recessed or raised areas. And that will give us a nice bit of depth to our paintwork and really start um, the good base of our weathering process. Like I said, there's many ways you can do this. This is the way I choose. Take your time, don't rub too hard with your cotton buds. I'm using lacquer paint, which is really tough, but if you're using a water-based or uh, alcohol-based, be a bit more careful because the paint will rub off quite easy. And the odorless mineral spirit is very, very forgiving. But just bear in mind when you're scrubbing away. On larger areas, you can come with a little bit of kitchen paper, just gently rub over. Um, again, be careful. Make sure you don't snag any PE or raised areas. You don't want to rip anything off. But it's a quicker way of covering larger areas. But for me, the cotton bud is the more precise way um, of removing it. But again, just take your time. All adds to the long term effect. As you can see, I'm just dabbing a bit of the wash on, uh, sorry, the odorless mineral spirits on, and then we can use the cloth to wipe it off. It needs a little bit on there, it doesn't take a lot at all. But work your way around the whole piece of arm and just remove as much excess wash as you can like i say several ways you can do this um you can clear coat if you wish i don't gloss or matte coat any of my armor at all i put everything on matte coats um and leave the finish as is i think clear coating it you lose a lot of the effect of your paintwork you're fading and what have you um and i have no issues <laughs> up until we use this life color set in a bit um with the way i weather um so like i say stick to what you know but it is good to try new things um, as you'll find new techniques. So there we go. Moving on to the side. Now we're going side to side and up and down now. We're trying to remove the excess wash between all those raised river heads or bolt heads. So it's a fine line to removing it all. Just enough to give a nice bit of detail. So we're going over it there and gently wiping it over with a kitchen towel. And with that wash and our paint effects we did last time, we're getting a really nice base for our weathering now. So again, last time we saw the uh, hill, uh, which we now are on. Finish off painting that link of the track, but we're going to weather it all together. It gets a uniform act, and as you can see, even just with that pin wash, it's added so much more depth to the model. Um, another dimension with uh, really is a very very good base start to your weathering and I don't drop it this time like I did last time um, and it is 
um, yeah, it just drastically changes the look of it. And that's going to continue with each step that we do now. So next up, oil dot fading uh, or rendering, um, you can call it. We've got white, yellow, blue, and green uh, from Windsor Newton. Very high quality oil paints. Um, these are about three pound fifty each on eBay. They're not expensive at all. Got a couple of brushes, and you can see they're both marked as to what they are. Uh, they're the Tamiya HF brushes, and I get a knife on the side to flatten it, and then write on the wood what they are. Or you put a bit of masking tape on, as we've done too. So we're going to apply the oil with the nice thin precise brush and then we're going to take off um, the excess with the flat brush and some santador again so we've got a piece of cardboard this is a handy tip before you get going if you can do for an hour or so before you start pop your little blob of oil on um, a piece of cardboard and what that will do that will leach out any of the excess oils you'll see it almost instantly on that blue start to leach out the oil it just makes life a little bit easier with oils full stop. So like I said, we're going with the four colours, yellow, blue, green, and um, white. And these will alter the tones of the green. Uh, again, there's several ways of doing this. This is my way. Again, it might not be the right way. It's the way I've always done it, and I always get a good effect. You can alter the tone in different areas. So you could use black around recessed areas to add a bit of depth and shadowing. But well, for me, um, I've already done that with my paint. So for me, I, these are the colors I use. And it will change the color of our arm. As you can see, it is starting to leach out on the yellow and the blue. Quite drastic how much quickly it happens. Um, I would recommend doing this an hour or so before you get going. But for us, time is against us today. So we've cracked on straight away. And we're going to start a little bit of the process. As you can see, our beautiful paintwork, all uh, modulated, faded, highlighted. With a bit of staining from that wash, it's getting that nice worn look, that ingrained dirt look we want. So quick wipe over of our brush, and then we're going to grab a colour at a time and work on a couple of panels at a time and randomly dot over um, spots of the oil paint. So a nice precise uh, pointed brush. Start with the yellow. We're not trying to put a huge spot of it down. I'm going to try and do it as random as possible. Don't go mad because it's going to get a few splotch of every color. And you'll be there all day removing the, uh, the oil. And what you don't want it to turn into is a pin wash. So when you're taking it off in a minute with the Santa door, don't go mad with how much you put on. Because it will turn into a wash and it'll end up on all your panel lines and ruin that nice work you did before. Now we were discussing this the other day. You could do it the other way around. You could do this first, then your panel line wash. It'll work um, either way. It depends how precise you are in a minute of getting these off. This is the way I prefer to do it. I like to do my pin wash first. Get all that nice staining on the paint and then go over it with the uh, uh, the rendering. Sorry. So like I said, we're going random. Nice small dots. Again, it's another one of those processes can take quite a while. But the end effect is worth it, I think. Again, it's another layer of weathering that adds to the overall look and dimension of the model. When you finish with a colour, just wipe it off in your cloth. And pick the next one. As you can see, all these colours um, all will highlight this green well. You could use a darker green, but the lighter one will add a bit more of an effect as well. And what we're going to do in a minute is blend all this together. Uh, using our flat brush with some Santador on again and take just enough of it off to leave a nice faded paint effect which you'll see at the end so there's our flat brush we'll dip it in our mineral spirits wipe off a good 90% of it probably not really much left on the brush and we're just going to slowly drag it all forwards and you'll see all those colors blend now you can do this less or more, depending on the way you want it. If you left it like that now and came back a few hours later, you'd have nice streaky paintwork. Again, you can hit it up again later on. Oils take for absolute ever to dry properly. So again, you could try this, leave it, look at the effect, and then come back and take more off if you wish. I know what this will do if it's left. If left like that, we'd have a massive streak all down that paintwork. So I know I need to blend it all. Just run over the brush, wipe off the brush, clean it off, clean mineral spirits, and then one 
quick last wipe over. There's no pressure applied there at all. We're literally just blending and streaking those oils together. And we're just looking for any excess and just taking it off. The auto focus being a pain there, do apologize. And then we'll have a quick look, we're looking for any excess streaks, and we'll leave that to dry and come back to it later on. So again, another process is going to take quite a while to do. So again, get some music on, get some people to chat with, and just work your way around the entire piece. I like to work on a couple of panels at a time, find that easier to manage. And again, once you get up to the upper surfaces, you can start working on slightly bigger areas um, because you can blend it a lot quicker. So like I say, you can add liquid. I need to buy some. It's a brown, um, thick liquid that you can add a small blob to uh, any wash, and it does dry the oils out a bit quicker. But for mostly what we're doing here, there's nothing really anything else to go over this. Well, there shouldn't be. There will be in a bit because we need to remove a paint. Um, so it doesn't really matter about the drying time. And the great thing is, if it dries and you think it's a bit too much, you can come back and take it off, or you can even do it again and go over it yet again. So there we go. Just blend it all in again. Make sure the brush is clean each time you do it. And don't let it collect in pools or areas. Now we've got the Life Color Dust and Rust set. I've used the rust before. It's fantastic. Uh, as a paint dry brush, it works absolutely great. I tried this dust on another vehicle. I think I tried it on my Abrams, and it didn't work out great. And we're now using it on this. So we jump straight in. We've already put a little bit down. Just upping my pressure on the airbrush a touch. Um, we're going to go over now. I completely ruined the look of the Challenger. Because this is OTT. I'm barely putting any of this down at all. All I want to do is put a nice light dust effect. And I'm thinking right now, like, uh-oh. That doesn't look right at all. Um, okay, we'll persevere. We'll do the whole thing and hopefully it'll blend in. and won't look as stark. And the further I'm getting around looking at it, thinking, I don't like the look of this. It doesn't look right at all. It almost looks like snow. <laughs> I wouldn't say that was dust at all. And I'm just checking as it dried. And I'm thinking, oh, crap, it has dried already. It's a nice warm day. And I'm looking at it thinking, hmm, do I like that or don't I like it? I think, okay, we'll put a little bit more on the upper surfaces. And we'll see what it looks like. And it was at this moment I realized I'd screwed up. Because I'm looking at it thinking, hmm, maybe it'll dry a bit better. Maybe because it's wet or fresh. It's a bit OTT. And now I'm thinking, uh oh, I don't like that at all. That looks terrible. We've lost all our paint effects. Um, <laughs> yeah, not sure if I like that. So I'm going to look around, doubt myself a little bit and thinking, no, no, it's okay. Keep going. Let's have a, a little look. And I'm thinking, uh, no, that looks crap. <laughs> and now I'm thinking, now I'm starting to really panic, like, uh oh, I've just ruined a day's work. So, plan B. Yes, we're not going to use that again. Um, luckily, in another set, um, there's a remover that they do. You can see it there in a the clear bottle. So, we're using a cotton bud, and we're going over everywhere, and then a bit of tissue. And as you can see, it's starting to come off in places. In other places, it does not come off at all. And this is what I mean about the dust effect being a little bit OTT at the end. I got probably 80% of it back off. Um, you can see the night and day difference on the back of the tank by the grills. Um, it, it doesn't look right at all. To me, that's not really a dust effect. It just looks almost whitewashed. Um, not good at all. It's probably me using it wrong. Uh, probably is user error. It normally is. Um, thankfully, this remover does take most of it off. But sadly, because we're on a matte paint... Um, it didn't. So fast forward the next day, you can see the paint left behind. There's nothing you can do about it other than completely repaint. It is what it is. So make the best of a bad situation. So killer product I use, and if you washes, we've got our dirt. Look at first place underneath. So this is the Apex 0.35, right about 25 psi. So we spray a little bit on. So that's the color of it wet. Hit it with air. 
and it'll magically dry in front of you. And there you go. So that is the perfect, that is the color we were looking for. Not a white color at all. Um, still need to sort our of tracks out. They still need to be hand painted. And I really need to start painting the back of those wheels. Every time I do armor, I forget. Uh, it's definitely something we need to remember. So this is the dust effect we want. Now, not this color. That dust effect from life color is way too white, way too light a color. Um, it has added a nice effect to some of the raised areas, um, but that's the color I wanted. So if I was going to do it again, I'd go with the likes of Tamiya Buff. Um, it's a much more reliable color. The only problem is once you spray that on, that is not coming off. So take your time. Spray a little bit, put it down for a bit, do something else, come back, have a look. Um, because, yeah, that life color very nearly ruined this model for me. But I'm not going to lie. After I sprayed this on, I left it for 24 hours, a little bit bummed out, thinking, oh, I've ruined my Challenger. Um, came in the next day, took the UMP washes off, uh, as you'll see in a minute, and thought, okay, that doesn't look too bad. It's not too bad at all. But you can see the awful mess it's left behind. So we will not be using those life color sets again. We'll keep it for the uh, the rust. I do have two others there that I will be getting rid of. And I'm going to stick to my tried and tested oils and UMP wash and pigments. So the armor uh, for me, it's going to be dirtier lower down. So we're putting the wash on thicker on the lower areas and on the back end. Because all my reference pictures showed it to be really dusted up at the back. And then we'll apply a light coating over the top. Now, because we're on matte, we're going to use that to our advantage. Now, the wash will stick like hell to it. Um, and it will really give us that ingrained dust look that we're going to be looking for. So, we're going to go a lot thicker on the back. A lot thicker on the bottom lower half of the track. And on the front as well. And then we're going to spray a few bits over the top. Luckily, it blends in that awful life color mess. And then we'll let it dry overnight and come back and take off some of the wash, leaving behind the effect I was looking for in the first place. Sadly, because the life color is already there, it does make it a bit OTT. But like I say, we're making the best of a bad situation. There's no going back from this other than stripping it or repainting the entire vehicle, which I don't want to do. We'll make the best of what we got. So... We're going to leave this now for 24 hours. We're going to paint up all the turrets as well. A little bit lighter on the turret because it's a higher area. The barrel will get a bit more. Um, as you can see, the UMP wash is covered really well. But this is very, very versatile. As you'll see in a minute, when we skip forward 24 hours, um, you can really use it to your advantage. So, turret's back on now. Because, like I say, we like to weather this all together. And you might be looking at the wash thinking, oh my god, there's a lot on there. But we can take it off. It's not a problem at all. I know how to use our washers. Um, I developed them, so I'm fully aware how to use these. It's just sad that the life color set is yeah, kind of muddied the waters a bit, but a bit. But hey, never mind. So through the airbrush, like I say, 0 0.35, 25 psi, it does spray really well, especially through the apex. You need you need a bigger needle nozzle for it to spray properly. Clean your airbrush out with some water first, then some UMP cleaner, and I have a dedicated apex for the washers. So, there we go. This is after it dried for a few hours. As you can see, you're looking at it now thinking, oh my god, what has he done to that? And, uh, yeah, that's what it looks like when it's fresh on. But, we can take most of this back off, which is what we're going to do in the next. But that's the dust colour I'm in the first place. So, as you can see, all the lower surfaces are done more than the upper. Just going to add one last little bit there. Autofocus being an utter pain today on my camera. I did pick the section for it to go in. I think the camera's dropped a little bit, so it's picking up the airbrush rather than the model. So I will rectify that for the next video. And there we go. So 24 hours, well, sorry, 12 hours later, we're back the next morning. A bit more positive frame of mind today. Again, you're looking at it thinking, oh my God, what is that? Uh, but trust me, stick with me, bear with me. This is the beauty of our wash. The effect we get in a minute is good. I like the way it looks. And this is what I was intentionally going for in the first place. So we've got a nice flat brush. Uh, this is a pigment-only brush. This isn't the same brush we use for the oils. 
what we're going to do now is we're going to use downward motions on the brush to remove the excess wash because I want this to be my dust effect. So I want this to collect in all those raised areas and even some of the recessed. And as you can see how well it comes off. Again, we're on a matte surface, so it's going to grip um, to some degree and it will stain the paint, which is exactly what I want. So nice and quick over it. We're getting the most off the front. So like I say, we just want to stain the paint or add detail to all those raised areas. We've painted a track now at the bottom. We're also giving that a coat of the dust as well. So once we've got all this off and we've got all the raised detail all nice and dusty, we'll come in with an earth colour and add our mud effect up the side. So we'll airbrush it on again. And same kind of thing, we can blend it and remove it as we go. Now, because of the life colour, you can still see the life colour at the top where it's our faded white colour. It has made the wash stick a bit more in some places. Um, so the brush alone didn't quite remove as much as I wanted. As you see, I'm going side to side as well to remove it from the areas I want. So we're going to come in a little bit with some water on the brush as well, and that will help a little bit more, uh, remove a little bit more of the wash and the paint as well. It'll just take off the life colour a little bit more. As you see, we got a nice stained effect from the UMP wash. Once we're happy, we've got most of the excess off from the raised areas. We'll let it dry again, work our way around the entire vehicle, and then come back in a bit with a bit of water to get the excess off. So going downwards also gives a streaking effect as well. So it'll look like rainwater streaks um, all the way to naturally settled. It is a good effect. So upper surfaces like these parts here, we want to leave the wash around the edge. Again, I do apologize for the autofocus, it's a pain. As you can see, we're just going to use the brush to brush around, leaving everything in and around those parts. You see my hand's clearly in focus. <laughs> and again, around the driver compartment. Just take off that wash. You can just keep going and going and going. If you wet it, fully wet it, i.e. run under a tap or whatever, you'll get 90% of the wash back off. But for us, we want to leave it behind to a degree. So we'll just keep working with the dry brush. Until we get the end result we want. So again, weathering can be a bit laborious and a bit repetitive. But we're going for the overall effect. The end effect is the important one. So a bit of time. Reference pictures are invaluable, hence why I've got a lot of pictures of the Bovington uh, Megatron. It's a slightly different vehicle. I've seen it with them about the Barracuda, so I'm just using whatever pictures I can find of it on that arena to weather it by. So again, we're going downwards on these uh, mud flap mud guards at the front and on the back, just hitting up all these a lot of recessed areas on the back. It's going to take quite a bit of work to get it off. But these Tammy brushes, these HF brushes are fantastic. It's starting to look good now. It's definitely um, looking less um, <laughs> as bad as it was with the life colour set. I think the wash, the actual scrubbing effect of the wash is taking off some of that paint as well which is quite relieving. And this is the exact dust look, dust look I was after. It's that color, that kind of dust I wanted. So get a bit more relieved now that hopefully I can pull this back from a, a disaster. So road wheels, um, I'm removing all the excess wash from the road wheel rubber itself. Um, I do this several times for the build, as you'll see. Um, <laughs> On my Abrams, I said there was a couple of things I'm unhappy about. Uh, while I was taking the pictures, I noticed I hadn't got the dust off the rubbers. I do like to keep them a little bit more cleaner than the wheels because I think the effect is um, less so on the rubber because they're a moving part. So we've got a little bit of water now. And we're using water to apply on the tank. Then brushing it over 
with our brush. This is the same brush again. And this will just get rid of a bit more of that excess wash, uh, mainly on the upper flat surfaces, where we don't necessarily want it to collect as much. So I'm not going mad. We don't remove loads of it, but we're just going to get rid of enough of it to get the effect I'm after. So it's a case of just going around, clean the brush off, wet it, wipe off most of the excess moisture. Pick your areas. Like I said, we're going for most of the flat horizontal surfaces. Just to give it a helping hand. So it's just water, plain tap water. Just give it a good run round. Once you're happy, you can leave it to dry and have a look how it looks and then come back and do it again should you wish. Or you can dry it with some kitchen paper or your airbrush. Use the air on your airbrush to dry it. It does dry very quick. But like I said, we're just getting rid of some of those excess bits from these horizontal flat parts. You can see what's coming off. Very little coming off the brush. Which is perfect. Exactly what we want. Same on the sides. Streaking it downwards. We've got all the excess wash off on the sides that we um, had earlier. So we're just going to go down vertically. And this will have a streaking effect once it dries as well. No real pressure on the brush. If you see anywhere there's a little bit of excess, you can go back over it again. Same on the bar armor. So like I say, this UMP wash, the light dirt was to just literally add that light dirt dust effect. Uh, we're gonna come back in a minute with our earth. As you can see, a very nice dusty effect. If you look at the real tank of Bobbington, it does click like that on the vehicle. So I'm happy with how it looks. We've got the earth now, which is a darker brown color. Just test spray in the bottom and you'll see the difference between the two different colors, quite a contrast. Now we're only gonna apply this to the lower surfaces, the very lower part of the hull and up the back again as well. And it'll work its way up the back more so than at the front. And again, we can blend this once it's dry. We can remove it with water. It's not a problem at all. We switch to the air on the airbrush. Helps dry it mega fast. And you can see the nice contrast between the colours. Again, perfect colour for me for like a dry um, dust mud effect. So just taking our time, getting in those road wheels. Again, we have to clean up the rubbers again. But we'll get a multi-layer weathering effect from this now. Two different colours. That's a case of just go around all the lower areas. We're not going to do any of the upper, just all the lower on this color because we want that con contrast between the dust and the actual mud effect as well. So again, do a section at a time, dry it off with the air, just have a look. Once you're happy with it, this needs to be a bit more random um, because it, it, it's just splatter mud to come up the side. Okay, we get the front, we get some of the tracks underneath as well. Because we are going to weather the tracks in the same colour. So we get the undersides at the front. I try and avoid underneath if I can because when I'm trying to take pictures or put it in the display case, the pigments just go everywhere and you can't see it. So it doesn't really matter. And again, onto the other side. So you can see we're sticking right down that lower third of the, uh, the armour this time. We want that nice blend into the light dirt and again road wheels underneath and then we'll get the tracks in a minute too so again looks a drastic color change at the minute but once we blend a little bit with our brush it'll blend it together and like i say you can come back you can take it mostly off again and start again or you can load your airbrush up again and apply it a little bit more in any specific areas you've missed Now, uh, other back end is absolutely caked in dirt on this tank, uh, running around the Bobbington Arena. So we're going to apply a little bit heavier to the back. Make sure we get underneath the bar armor too. Just having a quick look around. Like I said, we're not going to apply any of this to the turret. But we are all over the back, all over the tracks. Like so. And 
And there we go. So that's dried now for a couple of hours. And we're back in with our brush. Now, even lighter pressure than before. We're just blending this downwards. Not every single panel. Just specific areas. Just giving it a light blend in. Because this needs to be more of a random look. Now, because this is a random effect. It doesn't happen, um, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? It, it's not a perfect effect because it's so random mud and dirt being flicked up. As you can see, a quick run over the brush really does blend it in well. And it's really starting to get the look I was after. It's not perfect, I will admit that. The, uh, the life color paint added a little bit too much in areas, but hey, it's one of those. It is rather messy, um, so make sure you're in a area you don't mind getting a bit dusty um because they are quite highly pigmented the washes and I have a specific brush for each use so this is a pigment brush it's all it's used for whether it's wet or dry that way you get no cross contamination of other mediums and you see, we're utilizing the inner part of the tank here to hold it. We don't need to touch anywhere. Now, if you start putting your fingers on anywhere, you'll leave fingerprints behind, and they are a bit of a pain. You can get them off, but it's an unnecessary uh, task to have to do. Just try and hold the vehicle somewhere where it's not too um, detrimental to the finish. Again, third time now, we're rubbing off all the excess uh, pigments from off the road wheels, off the rubbers, and off the centers as well, because we want to blend into that nice dust effect we had. Because at this stage, blending is the key to making it look a bit better. Flip it around. Just keep having a look. Put it down. Do something else for five minutes. Come back. Have a little look. The beauty is, like I say, you can start again. You can have more. You can take more off. All depends on the look you're going for. So we're moving off the drive sprocket at the back because we are going to add some metal wear and tear to that in a bit. And again, we just blend in the darker earth into the white dirt on the road wheels. Now, utilizing our finger to blend it in the bottom there as well. Like I say, again, it's all subjective. It's it's your eye what you see, all down to your reference. Everyone's personal opinion is different on weathering. This is probably 90% of the look I was after. It's just a little bit too dusty in some areas. You can still see the life color painting areas on the side armor where it's not quite come off. And it, it, Whilst it adds a weathering effect, for me, it looks a bit OTT in places. So there we go. That's all the wash off now. Happy with the look. We've got our antenna aerials on there too. They are RB models, uh, two meter aerials. So there's two of those on there. Um, they've just been brush painted in Vallejo Black and then we hit it with some UMP wash. Sadly, one keeps falling off. It's actually fell off, it's at the back. And this is the weather and where we're at now. So quite happy with that. It's come out quite well. Um, again, just put it down to one side, come back to it. Keep having a look with fresh eyes, I call it. Just look for any areas you think might be a little bit overdone. Antenna, it fell off, like I said. So here we go, a little bit of CA glue. Right on the bottom, it's already pre-painted and weathered. So careful application. These are photo etch, well brass, sorry, not photo etch. So they do come off really easily. But even though they're two meter, I guess they're German really for the two meter and the 1.4, uh, they're the perfect scale for this. So there we go. Right, we've got our graphite pencils now, well, pencil and stick. And we're going to add some wear to the edge of the um, tracks. Again, it's a visual effect. Whether it's right or wrong, I do not know. I assume it is. Um, couldn't see any real good weathering close-up pics of the tracks. We're going to add some wear and tear to the edge of the tracks and the drive sprocket at the back as well. And these um, lovely graphite pencils are fantastic. Now, as you know, we left an extra link on our tracks um, so we can slacken them off or tighten them up as we require. So I slackened it off to get in there 
uh, for the drive sprocket and I would tighten it back up to apply to the actual tracks themselves. As you can see, we're just getting the edges of that sprocket. It's not all visible, so make sure you get any areas that are. As you can see, the track does loosen and tighten, which is a good benefit of adding that extra link, to be honest. Just work her around. It's a very subtle effect. It's not really in your face. But it just adds a little bit of extra depth to the um, tracks as well. Like I say, you can pick these up on Amazon. I'll put the link in my list of products down below. Very, very handy tool. And then we've got our pencil. We're just adding a little bit of detail to a few little areas here and there. Not necessarily totally correct, but just adds a little bit of visual depth here and there. A little bit of wear or a little bit of highlighting uh, to specific areas. So I'll normally go for like the MG, the edges, uh, tool clamps, things like that. Now we've got some UMP Earth again. This is what we did our mud effect up the side with. We've got our pigment brush again. We've got two. We're going to use the larger one. What we're going to do, we're going to dip that in our wash. Use the smaller one to flick some mud effect on the tank. So load up your brush. Make sure the wash is fully mixed. Test it first. There we go. We're going to get splatter of all different sizes. I'm just going to hit up the side. We're not going to go massively over the top. But we're just going to add some random splash effects of mud. Here and there. And again, you can take it back off. But this at this moment in time, we don't want to be mucking around because we will lose some of the dust effects we put on before. So we just take our time. Randomly added. So we're going to add it to the lower and the upper surfaces of the hull and the turret as well. More at the bottom than the top. Flip it around. This is where we need to be careful that we don't drop it again. Or start adding fingerprints everywhere because it's so easy to do. I find to angle the piece of armor upwards helps as well. Not only so you guys can see on camera. There you go. That'll be a fingerprint. Uh, but also helps with the effect as well because you want to be able to flick it from underneath up so again load your brush up wipe off the excess and start flicking it on random is the key if you do go too thick in places you can get it back off like i say which i think i do show in a minute on the front but again just adds a bit more depth to the already um weathered model there's other ways of doing this. You could use oils if you wanted and an ammo wash. But for me, this is a lot more forgiving and I do like the effect of our washes. You also use an airbrush to blow um, the wash off the, uh, the brush. I find this a bit more um, direct and it's a bit more aimable this way. When you're blasting off with air, it can be a little bit too harsh. So I definitely find this an easier way to do it. Again, you can do more or less. Again, put it to one side. Come back to it, think, yeah, it needs a little bit more. You can add a little bit more, but less is more with weathering. Quite often, um, you'll go too far and think, damn, shouldn't have done that. And you'll regret it and kick yourself for doing it. So, again, I'd always do a step, put it to one side, let it dry, come back, afresh, have a good look, and see what you think. So again on the front, now you're going to see me apply a little bit too much now and I'll show you how I deal with getting rid of it. You see the mistake I did, I didn't fully wipe the brush off on the tub like I did before. I'd blotted it on the paper and it still left loads of wash on there. So we've got a, three huge splodges, two on the upper turret and one on that front row, lower right of the hull. So what we're going to do quickly before it dries is mop up the excess of the cotton bud, trying to spread it as little as possible. And then we'll blend it in to the already weathered surface, like so. And this will spread it out a little bit. And then we'll come in with some water again. And it will get most of it back off. 
So a little bit too big those splodges. My fault for not wiping it off properly. We've got some water now. As you can see, it's already dried. It's left a, a brown stain. I'm just lightly go over. You can see the cotton buds picked it up. Again, we'll do that bit. We'll let it dry. Have a look and see what we think. And if it needs more, we'll come back and go over it again. Nice and simple to use. Nice and forgiving. When you know how to use them, UMP washers are fantastic. Yes, they are our product. Yes, it is my product. Um, but they are very, very versatile and give a very, very good effect. Combined with oils and other mediums, they can really add a multi-layer uh, weathering to any armour. Modern day armour weathered a bit differently to World War II. They're not as um, battered a vehicle. There's no real chipping on there. These are pretty well looked after these days, especially British and US armour. Um, it's pretty well looked after. So there we go. Not quite happy with that. It's drying off. So we've got the dry side just to wipe off a little bit more. And that's it. Perfect. Happy with that. It's come out well. Now, one thing I did forget to show, and I only spotted when I started taking pictures, was I hadn't um, added any exhaust soot. So we've got some black pigments uh, off camera, added it around the exhaust um, at the back, which is by that rear bar armor, and then added some smoke sooty effect to the bar armor itself. So we literally put the dust pigment on, um, hit it with UMP thinner to let it set, once it had dried, we came with a cotton bud again and just wiped off the excess. And there we go. We are all done. Is, is it exactly how I wanted? No. That life colour set kind of put a kibosh on the weathering. It's a little bit too dusty in places than I would have liked. I think we've made the best of a bad situation. Uh, coming back to it and um, yeah, making the most out of it. But it is slightly, I'd probably say it's like 20% more dustier than I would have liked. You can see where the life color is. Um, uh, while that's another layer, it is a little bit too much in places. So a great kit this. Really enjoyed this kit. Like I said all along, it's not one for beginner at all. It's a complex kit, a complex build. It's a complex shape to weather. But overall, beautiful looking tank. Whilst it's on the turntable, it doesn't show the true depth as well. Uh, my camera on... Um, filming mode rather than picture mode doesn't get the, the full depth or i have some stills of it in a minute where you can see what i can see with my naked eye so this is part three this was uh rifle models challenger 2 this was primed in up black prime and we base coated it in ak nato green which is a little bit too light it has darkened up as touch as you'll see in the pictures in a minute uh, we modulated the paintwork with lighter and darker tones of the nato green uh, but then come in with an oil pin wash, we've done some oil dot rendering, a life color dust effect, which we won't be using again, uh, and a couple of tones of UMP wash. And this is where we're at now. So as you can see in the stills, you can see the effects I've got there. Very happy with that. We definitely turned it around from what I thought was a ruined model. Uh, we've got the different tones of UMP wash that's out of the dust, the mud effect, the splatter, um, along with all our paint effects, have all combined really well. Um, there's a few areas of change on it. The ECM table at the top, I think, should have weathered it a touch more. Uh, and that one of the antennas, the cage one, just keeps moving back. I push it forward, it's good, it likes to lean back. <laughs> it's one of those. But overall, very happy with this. It's turned out pretty well. Uh, and like I say, shows the versatility of pretty cheap weathering effects. Um, oils are pretty cheap to buy. Even our UMP washers, they're pretty cheap to buy. Uh, nice and reliable. And uh, yeah, I think that's give a good effect in creating a dusty, well-weathered Challenger tank. It's a great kit uh, of an awesome tank. Always love the Challenger. I built the Trumpeter kit a couple of times. It's not the best kit in the world. And it is nice to see um, a decent kit out there now. Uh, another thing as well, the Megatron decals on the front, they look really shiny. They're not silvered. They're just pretty glossy. I should have gloss uh, matte coated them really, but one of those. And I absolutely love this front shot down the barrel. One of my favorite pictures of this. There we go, then another video build done. Uh, the first armor video build I've actually managed to finish on the channel. There was one a long, long time ago that never got finished, sadly. Uh, but this one's done. Fairly happy with it. Um, it's turned out okay. It's a little bit more heavily weathered than I wanted. Um, the dust effect's a little bit over the top for me, but it looks okay. And I think I pulled it back from that initial mistake with that life color paint, which I won't be using again. 
Um, the rust effect is fantastic. The dust effect, not so much. If I was going to do it again, I'd use an LP and use like maybe buff or something like that to add a light dust effect. I think it did that on the leopard, I think, and that worked quite well. So stick to what you know sometimes. It's good advice, but then again, try new stuff. Yeah, you do find better ways of doing it. So catch 22, really. So if you've enjoyed that, um, probably not your typical build series on armor because I haven't really gone that in depth that we're here forever otherwise building it. Um, if you've got any feedback or questions, pop them in the chat down below. I do read all the comments and try and reply to everyone as well. Uh, and let me know your thoughts on the build, the kit, if you've got it, what you think of it. And let, let me know what you think of my model as well. So make sure you sub to the channel, click that bell notification. Um, make sure you uh, leave a comment and a thumbs up as well. Next build video will be the Tamiya uh, Ford Mustang GT4, which we're going to do in the Volt scheme. We've got the IndyCar decals and the Gravity Colors paint for it. So hopefully in a week or two, we'll get the first part of that up and get that get the ball rolling on that as well. Uh, there's a T55 buddy build, group build, starting on ice on Facebook as well by Norman. Um, so if you want to take part in that, pop over there and have a look. So I'll be starting my mini on T55, which is up there, you can't quite see it. It's going to be a hell of a kit. It's going to be a hell of a build. There's a lot more parts in this ch Challenger in there, that's for sure. Uh, and as always, check out Intesta Scale Model Facebook page and forum, umpretail.com, where you can find a lot of the products I've used in these videos. Again, there's a link in the description down below. Go and read it before you ask me, because you'll probably find it in there. Uh, check out my Paul ISM page for all my own modeling work. Um, it's mirrored from ISM, um, but it's shareable on there, which makes life a bit easier for me sharing around Facebook. Uh, check out the Off-Air Hangout group on the Live at the Bench page for all the Off-Air and Live show news as well. Um, and that's it. So I will catch you all next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.